battle for the Olympia fans. It's your boy, Aaron Clark, IFBB Pro, three weeks out from the Olympia 212 division. This is my first year getting to do this show, so I'm real excited. I'm about to take you through my delt workout, so stay tuned, pay attention, and let's kick it. For shoulders, I mean, I, I switched up a lot of things kind of here and there. Um, I think like anybody, when you first start training, you, you do way too many heavy pressing movements. And um, I'm not going to say that I don't still press heavy sometimes, but um, if you want to be a bodybuilder and you want to have the best shoulder development you can, you can't shoulder press the maximum weight that you can press every workout. So I pre-exhaust nowadays and uh, I just do more volume, uh, get a lot more blood in the muscle and really you know, focus on training the delt rather than uh, pressing and such. I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking the heavier the pressing, the more progress they're making. And uh, you can do that for a couple years and then you won't be able to train shoulders at all, so. We can start with a little bit of traps. Um, I know that traps aren't really part of the shoulder, but I've always done that. I used to do more heavy strokes, but again, I've kind of involved in doing just more volume and, um, you know, doing heavy strokes is kind of, in my mind, because you're putting so much strain on your back and your hips and so many different tendons are just being yanked on. And, uh, if you want to train heavy, all the rest of your body parts don't waste your energy and your tendon strength. Struggling 600 pounds. So you don't want to so I'm going to do an upright row on this uh, low row machine. It's kind of a unique way I like to do it. I'm going to do a super set of with dumbbells right here. Not too heavy weight, but just to kind of fill the muscle with blood to get a good shot. and then I'll get into doing my presses. And before I know it, I'll stay on the scale. 
and I'll be way ahead of myself. So, you know, it's, it's a level headed and uh, I just carried away. shoulder presses um, especially recently uh, one arm at a time just because um, I've had some injuries I had a pec tear and uh, shoulder injury before so I think another thing you gotta be careful with uh, especially with barbells but you can get with dumbbells too is that when you get into pressing really heavy you'll really uh, accentuate your imbalances which will uh, without doubt lead to injury so for me doing it like this has made it so I have no choice but to really focus bilaterally and uh, really develop the circuit inside evenly. So you got your first pro win this year, right? Yeah. At the New York? Yeah. How's that feel? Feels good. I mean, of course. Um, you know, I feel like it's, at least so far, it's been a real breakthrough year for me. Um, you know, I, I finally had the opportunity to really push it and really dedicate myself to it. Hardest part, um, you know, having sponsors here, IMD, um, you know, it helps, uh, and to also just kind of have that uh, almost validation behind you that uh, it's worth it, or that uh, you know you really can do it. Um, you know, it helps you to keep pushing and set the next goal. And uh, what's that next level? What year did you turn pro? 2012. So you're 24? Huh? How old were you? 23. 23? Yeah. So, you know, off the bat it was hard because no one picked me up. Um, you know, I didn't really have any uh, exposure much. And I think that was a big disappointment because. At 23, when you win USA's first try, you think uh, your life's about to turn around, everything's going to be different, but the reality of the situation is you just spend all your money doing the USA's, and now you get a pro card in the mail after you spend enough, you know, not to say not time for planning, I choose to do it, but it takes a long time. It's really not, you know, you dive in, but you're not going to learn to swim for a while. 
Let's just say that. Now, uh, these were a couple more light press, but instead of doing it like this, I'm going to get some lighter dumbbells and do a set of lateral raises, and then do a light set of presses to pump them up. Then we'll probably go do one more side down movement, and then go to the rear delts.
doing it. Think about it, break it down. You know, physically and anatomically, the one that's actually doing it for your body. Because sometimes there's a lot of growth signs, a lot of things you can see around. And so much good, but a lot of the emotions. So, you know, a trial and error. training you're also doing it wrong. Um, your, uh, you know, your, your, your rear delt is such a very small muscle and it's right next to a lot of very large muscles. So a lot of people think they can lift a lot of weights with the rear delts but they're really just lifting that way with their rhomboids and all the other mu muscles and then they can't figure out why they don't have any rear delts. So these are a few exercises that are not really heavy but I've kind of been able to develop a good mind-muscle connection with.
Yeah, you know, I used to do a little bit of chest when I was shoulder, but uh, this time I'm going to try to let it get in my eyes. I also find that uh, you, know, you got to be realistic with how much you really got in your tank in terms of energy expenditure because it's not about just calories but it's your central nervous system you know and uh, not even physically but mentally how much can you really recover to give 100% to your training um, I think that comes with you know time doing it and you'll get a better idea of really where your sweet spot is. I mean, I see some guys who train twice a day, and I know that I can't do that. And it could be that I train harder. Could be that they just have more energy. I don't know. I don't. I don't. There's not really any way for me to know. But um, you know, you got to experience. It, figure out where that is, because uh, once again, you know, if you're putting all this energy into your cardio. And then people are like, well, well, you just got to dig deep and train just as hard. I mean, sure, you can dig deep and train hard, but you'd be lying if you said that you'll be able to train just as hard. Because that's not in the reality of the situation. What's your calories and carbs look like right now? Um, you know, it's really not too bad. To be honest with you, my appetite is not huge. Um, so I still do red meat once a day, just to kind of keep myself full. It's either steak or uh, like a grass-fed beef that I'll buy. Um, and at least two, I'll say, over times three, and my other meals are egg whites. Um, that I drink, two cups, usually mixed with some, uh, like a fiber product or, or a superfood greens, just to kind of help with the digestion. Um, that, of course, is a very time efficient way to diet um, because you don't really have to prepare it. It's already pasteurized, your body can process it, and you just drink it down, and your meal is done in 10 seconds. Um, you know, I'll have carbs with that meal. I like cream of rice. Um, I do jasmine rice, some sweet potato. I really stick with jasmine rice a lot, though. Um, you know, I avoid the gluten. But I'd say realistically, my carbs are like, depending on the, the highest will go for a meal. Right now, it's about a cup and a half of rice. And you know, at the end of the day, depending on my day and what I weigh and how I look, I'll cut it down and it'll slowly go down to a cup and a half a cup and then to just more, you know, a little higher fat content on my last meal with more fiber and then 
that's that. But to be honest, I've never done zero carbs in my life. Um, it has to do with my metabolism. I always train hard. Um, you know, I've always been in the gym. Minimum of two hours, I'd say, five days a week. You know, all year round. So, and I don't, I don't really binge eat per se. I'm not somebody who really. I enjoy, you know, a little ice cream or whatever here and there. But if you do that in moderation, you can almost do it all the time. You know, it's about self control and uh, once again, learning your body. You need to learn how to eat, not just follow a diet. Um, uh, it's important because a lot of times foods are not bad. They are just, uh, you eat them at the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's an important thing to learn. shoulders twice a week at the most um, but really my training cycle is kind of centered around my leg workouts like I said I'll do quad enhancing one about five days apart um, so yeah I'll fit in the workouts in between then sometimes shoulders is one of those workouts I'll do one time heavier and then if I need an extra day I'll throw another one in depending on how I feel if my arm feels like it's gonna fall off or I feel like I want to get back on the gym me do go through my shoulder workout a few weeks out from the Olympia. Um, I'm really excited to make an appearance. I want to thank my sponsors, Gear Nutra and Muscular, De Muscular Development, the number one bodybuilding magazine on the planet. So keep an eye on me guys because I'm going to make an impact here in three weeks. Come back tomorrow, we're going to hit some legs. So until then, it's time to eat, clean up, and we'll kick it tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>